What's up YouTube? This is your boy John from Project Ellsworth and I am back with you today to give you my review of the 2017 film Death House. Good morning everybody. If you're new to my channel and you like horror movie reviews, don't forget to click that subscribe button. I do a couple of these things every week. Death House was written by B. Harrison Smith and Gunnar Hansen. It was directed by B. Harrison Smith, starring Courtney Palm, Cody Longo, D. Wallace, and Kane Hodder. We need to get out of here. I will follow you to hell. The way out is not that way. It's down to them with me. So the Death House is a maximum security prison that's underground. It consists of nine levels, and on that ninth level are five individuals who are known as the Five Evils. And on this day, we have Agent Boone and Agent Novak. They're taking a tour of this facility, which is being head up by D. Wallace's character. And during this tour, they witness and sort of participate in a few experiments. And during this tour, Agents Boone and Novak are using an elevator to go between the levels of evil and the power goes out. Of course the power goes out. Technologically advanced maximum security. Stupid. So now Boone and Novak find themselves in a fight for survival up against nine layers of the most horrible people on earth and five evils. So I remember reading about Death House when this was being made and this movie was coined as being the expendables of horror. Uh, your two main characters, your two horror main characters in this movie were Dee Wallace and Kane Hodder. You saw them quite a bit throughout the movie, but this movie had Tony Todd, Bill Mosley, Sid Haig, Felissa Rose, Danny Trejo, uh, who am I forgetting, who am I forgetting, Michael, Michael Berryman, Lloyd Kaufman. There were quite a few people in this movie that are very well known throughout the horror community, um, but the only two that are really in this movie a lot are Kane Hodder and Dee Wallace. Kane Hodder, Kane Hodder more or less is the star of this movie. Uh, I would certainly not call this movie the expendables of anything. Right off the bat, one of the first things I noticed in this movie within the first half hour, first 15 minutes to a half hour, was everything felt very monotone. Everybody spoke to each other in a very monotone way. Everybody, monotone, everything is monotone. There was one scene in the shower there, where the two agents, strangely enough, have to shower together. They're not together, but they have to shower together. And they're standing in the shower having a conversation with each other about tattoos. He's got tattoos of birds on his back and he's got a little girl on his shoulder. She's got a tattoo of the word marigold on her wrist. And the way that they speak to each other, these two are standing in the shower, naked, talking to each other like this. That's a pretty cool tattoo. What's, what is that tattoo? What do those birds mean? I don't know, when I was a little kid, I just drew them. What does that thing on your wrist mean? There's the word marigold, but I don't remember why it's there. I, don't, I just don't remember anything about it. Okay. And that was how most of this movie was acted. I mean, Kane Hodder was actually pretty good in this movie, but even Dee Wallace was monotone like that. I feel like this was just a Kane Hodder movie. This was definitely not an Expendables of Horror. There were a little bit of practical effects in this movie that looked okay at best. I mean, it was nothing fantastic, but there was CGI in this movie that looked absolutely dreadful. I hated every bit of the CGI in this film. Another thing I thought was very strange and felt very weird to me in this movie was the five individuals that they referred to as the five evils. They were on the ninth layer of this prison, which is underground. So they were the ninth layer all the way down underground. These guys looked like completely normal people. They also talked very monotone. They were very monotone in their delivery of everything, but they were almost, they looked like superheroes or something from the movie Tron. They were wearing like uniforms with lights. Just the whole thing felt weird. All in all, the story is very simple. These two agents go to a maximum security prison to do a tour. The power gets shut down. The prisoners get loose. The agents must survive. That's it. I mean, there's really not anything more to this story when you boil it all down. 
The final thing that I gotta talk about here that I didn't like, what the hell is this? There was one positive that I had for this movie that I thought was kind of cool. Gunnar Hansen actually is the one who wrote the original story for this movie. But when this movie was made, he had already passed away. So there was a character that they put in this movie called Leather Lace. Uh, it was supposed to be his daughter, uh, Gunnar Hansen's character's daughter. He obviously couldn't be in the movie, but they superimposed an image of him on a, uh, a window of a cell where Leather Lace was inside. Leather Lace wore human skin, had a human skin mask on, and killed people with a chainsaw. Very simple, but I thought it was a nice touch. So Death House, 2017. It was not for me. I think referring to this as the Expendables of Horror is kind of a joke when most of the people that are appear in this movie are not really even in the movie. You see them for a couple seconds, they barely have any screen time whatsoever. Kane Hodder did an alright job in this movie. D. Wallace was too monotone in this movie. I got to about the 15 to 20 minute mark in this movie and almost turned this off, but I figured if I turn it off, I wasn't being true to my channel. I gotta watch bad movies too. So Death House, if it were me, if you take my advice, I tell you not to waste your time. Have you seen this flick? Do you have a much better opinion of this movie than I do? Leave me some comments down below and let's talk about it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you have been enjoying my content up to this point, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, have a kick-ass day, and thank you for watching.